Wow, okay, welcome back to eRacing GP. My name is Alex Young and uh, the guy below me, that's uh, Amal Hazik, a um, very well-known sim driver. Thanks, Amal, great job for the Copper Class. He's just called the Copper to Class with Alistair Young. Copper Class had some exciting racing, didn't it, Amal? Yeah, indeed, in fact, it was edge of your seat stuff because you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, sometimes like the leaders will be at the front, but mm. they can get caught up easily. We saw in the final lap there, so we don't know if Sean C was gonna win the race because he only had a second in it. Yeah, I was super close. Okay, so the copper edition is done. Now we are with the bronze edition. And these are Formula 3 cars. Uh, favorite of yours? Yeah, definitely, because these cars are so chuckable. Because this is the pride, this is the old regulations. In fact, it's based off the 2005 or is it 2012 Delara? Because they still had the big ball, balloon nose at the, beluga nose at the front. So these cars are absolutely fun to drive compared to some of the newer cars, like especially the GP3 lookalikes and the current F3 cars. Mm. Those cars are uh, just don't feel like Formula 3 cars, they feel more like super Formula 3 cars if anything, so yeah, these cars are absolutely chuckable. Yeah, okay, so we are at, of course, the Hockenheim ring, um, and uh, yeah, no track map today, but um, actually, why don't we just have a quick look at the uh, Copper Championship table at the moment, the top three at the moment, well, actually, we look at the top ten, shall we, Amir? Yeah, we should, because <laughs> it, it, oh, that's, it's actually Copper class. Oops, sorry, wrong one, Copper class, let's go to Bronze, shall we? So in bronze, Bernard Chan, he was a real runaway leader um, in the round one. Did a really good job there. Axel Nokom, um, the young, how old is he? Nine-year-old, did a fantastic job, finished second as, uh, second for the round. Chester Lamb, uh, Chester Lamb actually isn't going to be joining us today. He has some issues and won't be joining us. Francis Angelo Gonzalez, we just saw him in practice. Um, Sherman Singh in fifth. Zikri in sixth. John Fentakumi Lee in seventh. Uh, Ridor Rilo in 8th from, from Indonesia, Yevan David from Sri Lanka in 9th, and Momolua in 10th. So, a minute to go, Ammo. Um, ooh, Mendes has been quick. It's a new driver from Sri Lanka, actually. Oh, uh, actually. Yeah, we, he, he did join us before, I think. Yeah, we didn't see him in round 1, but we saw him in Global Edition 4. There he is in the yellow endless car, so we're going to watch out for him, because we saw he was super quick. I think it was he did copper last year, didn't he? So it's good to have him back with us um, in, in the bronze class. Yeah, indeed. And the fact that he could give uh, guys like Brent... In fact, where is Bernard? I don't see Bernard... In, oh, there he is. He's actually in 12 right now. Yeah, because Bernard was pretty much the most gluttonous driver of all the classes from last, last weekend because he had pole, he had the fast lap in the first race, and he had the fast lap in the second race and finished second. So he yeah. almost had the absolute perfect weekend from last time out. So he'll be looking to do the same thing here, but he's got several drivers trying to challenge that crowd for this yeah. weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, really, really had a strong weekend, actually. Um, so it'll be good to see how he does, see if he can continue the domination. But, uh, you know, there are a few drivers out there that can challenge him. I think Mendes can take the fight to him. Who else I think is going to be close? Like Alex Chai's uh, cousin is also going to be very quick as well. Yep. Both, both cousins also watching the stream just now as uh, we're looking at Chris Matthews, also one of those drivers that scored points from the previous round. Uh, yeah, it's sad we don't have Chester Lamb for this one because Chester did compete in the Gold Class the final round last season in Silverstone, so we know he's going to be quick. But it's quite unfortunate that he's been having issues with, I think, it might be in his PC, so we don't have, to, we can't see him for this one at least. So hopefully he can drop this one and come back next time to actually challenge these guys. Another returnee we haven't seen in a while is Anta. Anta from uh, Bangladesh, actually. He's uh, back in, uh, I think, I don't know if he's racing from there, but he's back in Malaysia. But uh, good to see him here with us. Indeed, and a good friend of one of our sim racer friends as well, Mitchell Chia. So, yeah, glad, glad to see another involvement from the real world drivers as we are now looking at Anushka Mendes coming through the final corner here to start a lap at the Hockenheim ring. So, here we go then. He breaks the timing beam now. And he goes through to the first corner, the north curve, while the final corner's got the suit curve. So, literally means north and south curve. It was, in the, it was actually one of the only very few places on the track where the original circuit, barring the one from 1964-2001, that exists. So, that has been there since the 30s. As he comes to the second corner, as Alistair mentioned before, it's crucial that you can try to get on power early and try to power your way through the second third corners to get a good exit. In fact, 21.2 in that first sector, not bad because Driven here before, I think 21.0 is like the ideal first sector. So Mendes then might be the first driver to break, break through the timing beam. So that's why he's actually purple right now. Coming out now to the hairpin, site of some many big accidents, including the likes of Cristiano Damato back in 2003, where his tire failed, and more recently in the W Series, where Emma Kitalainen actually whacked through a couple of drivers. So we saw that already in the copper class. We're going to probably see it in bronze too. Yeah, now coming to this flat out right hander. 
uh, to this, this corner here, this left hander here. Very easy to overcook it through here. Important that you don't because you want to set yourself up for this next right hander here. It's a very important corner. Leads onto a medium sort of length straight. Um, and uh, yeah, I think Formula 2 car. Is it a lift? Yes, it does. It's just a lift. In uh, another car, I'd probably be breaking so much downforce these cars have. And he's purple in Sector 2 as well. So Mendes doing good jobs. Purple in Sector 1, purple in Sector 2. When you see the sectors go purple, that means you are the fastest of all. If you see him go green, it means you're the fastest for yourself. That's the fastest sector you've done so far today. But when it's purple, that means you're faster than everyone. But he makes a mistake in the last corner. That's going to cost him two or three tenths for sure. Um, but for now, this might be good enough for pole. And is it? Yes, it. Yes, no, it, it isn't. He's actually fourth place fourth. right now. Alex Chia is actually going through. So. Uh, Alex, your pick for whoever's going to be fastest for this one is proving to be vindicated. Oh, never mind. Spoke too soon. 300s ahead of him is Yevon David. Wow. Then there's another favorite out there, Mohamed Zik. Uh, not Mohamed Zikri, sorry. Nazir Alma Azman out there is also. And uh, he's uh, he's just had a pretty good lap time. There he is in seventh position. Ooh, look, I love his backdrop. He's got a backdrop going there as well. So looking very nice and professional. Obviously racing from home as we all are. This is all 100% online. Let's just follow him for a while. Let's see if we can find some time. But um, we should also go to Bernard Chan in a while because we've not seen him uh, do a time yet. Uh, no, yes, he he's fourth. He's only a tenth behind uh, Yevon David. So first to fifth, only covered by almost two tenths of a second as we were looking at Nazi Azman there looking a bit like a pyro a bit there, to be honest. And driving the same gloves as Ayman Akim's. Yeah, in fact, those are the same KG3 gloves that Ayman drove, w drove before. So he's going for the same style as some of the fast boys that we're going to see later in gold. Yeah, let's go see if we can find Bernard Chan. Um, oh, actually, no, let's follow Nazir, shall we? I mean, Nazir's gone purple in Sector 1. So he's not had a pole position in his racing so far with New York Racing, e -Racing GP. But I know he's been doing a lot of practice. Could this be his first pole position? We're coming down to the end of Sector 2. Um, sector 2 now, they're coming up across any second now, Oh, look at that, two tenths up uh, after two sectors. Wow, wait, and he did the exact same thing that I said, 21.0 is the absolute best first sector you can pull off in these Formula 3 cars, and 106.3 is not a bad shabby suit one as well. Lost it a bit there coming out of the sacks curve, that's why we didn't slow his momentum too much, because in these Formula 3 cars, momentum is so important. The moment that you slide it a bit, you're going to lose a bit of, t you're going to lose a lot of time. Absolutely right. You can't afford to slide it around. That's why these cars are very good for teaching you good habits. He goes across the line. Ooh, <laughs> just a tenth of pole position. And look at that. Bernard Chan has gone himself up to P3. But it's his cousin, Alex Chia, who's doing the business at the moment. Absolutely. He's doing not only bits, he's doing big time here. In fact, he, he's just ahead of Yevidebe, who just went up to second place about 900s off. Well, let's just run it off. It's a tenth off. So... A 10th minute between 1st and 3rd with uh, Bernard Chandi, runaway championship leader from the first round, just in it between 2 tenths of them yeah. in 4th place. I just want to quickly go to Alex Chia because he's finishing a lap as well and I just love the onboard because he does, he uses VR, uh, virtual, um, yeah, VR goggles so <laughs> that's what he's seeing from inside and you can see him look across the apex of turn 1. I'd love this view right now. Oh, he's going to run, oh, oh no, that's a mistake, he's run wide. Let's go back to Bernard Chan then, shall we? Yeah, that's it. That's the end of his qualifying. Now we have to focus back onto the front run. As you said, Bernard Chan, he's a tenth up on his previous... Sorry, he's a tenth behind the fastest lap time right now, but he, he's setting, he is setting personal best. So we have to keep an eye out for him because right now... Anush well, Anushka Mendes out of nowhere, six tenths faster. So this is going to be second place on the grid for Bernard Chan if he keeps this up. Wow, so he's um he's a tenth up on his his best time for Sector 1. But he's, I think... No, sorry, he's a tenth down on Mendes' Sector 1 time from earlier on. So he's got to find a bit of time in Sector 2 if he's going to try and approach Mendes for pole position. He's gone green, so he's his quickest se session, but it's three, three, 38 hundredths down on Mendes at this point into Sector 2. So you're right, I don't think this is going to be good enough for pole position. It might be good enough for P2. And a bit prematurely, we have the results to come up before the end of the lap, but that's just uh, how it, the, the system works. As uh, now we're looking at Alex, sorry, yeah, we, we are looking at Bernard coming through the final corner. He's only fifth, six right now, eight tenths off. Can he improve his lap time as he comes across the line now? Yes, he does. He moves up to third place, almost 900 behind his cousin, but that's not enough for Paul. It's third place. Right, and then uh, looks the Sri Lanka sandwich. You've got Yevon David in fourth as well. Nazir Osman in fifth. Mohamed Zikri also a good job. Um, team, um, teammate to Nazir Osman in sixth. 
Alan Drake Cruz, oh, the young kid in seventh. Francis Gonzo Gon Angelo Gonzalez in eighth. Jonathan Takumi Lee in ninth. And Mutic in tenth. So, any surprises there for you, you think, Amo? Yeah, M Mendes, absolutely, because he's, had, he's bossed it. He's completely bossed this whole grid. That time was something that we did not expect. It was just out of nowhere. We, we knew he was fastest in practice, but yeah. we didn't know he was really that fast. Yeah, that was a super impressive lap. I think um, Alex in second and Bernard Chan in third are going to have the work cut out, aren't they? I mean, it's I, it's going to be about the start. The start's going to be very important. Mendes needs to get a clean start. Um, Tyre is times three for bronze. They've never had it at times three before. So a lot of the drivers last night in the practice servers were complaining that, about making the tyres last. Hey, but that's a fact of real life racing as well as virtual racing, and it's going to come down to who can do that best. Indeed, and it's going to be a bit like uh, uh, GP2, in this case, Formula 2 style driving, because Formula 3, we don't normally see pit stops or even high deck tyres. In fact, even in GP3 and the current Formula 3 championship, you don't see that. The tyres last long, but whatever it is, this is a new challenge for any of them, as now we're waiting for the lights to come up, and when they go out, we're looking at Alicia's view. Five red lights on the gantry. And we're away here in Ockenheim, and that's not a good start for Alex Chia. He's going to get taken by his cousin, and Yev and David around the outside. And Nushka Mendes gets an absolute flyer. He gets the whole shot and takes the lead through the first corner. Bernard Chan second, Yev and David third, and Alex Chia will on board with him on the VR side. Well, hopefully we get to stay for him for a while, because this is a great review to see what happens during the start of the race. As Yev and David goes under the inside of, Ber of Bernard Chan and takes second place. Now he's trying to go aim for the, aiming for the lead on his fellow countryman, Anushka Mendes. That is a brilliant start from the Sri Lankan. Wow, Sri Lanka 1-2 in third position, Bernard Chan. And we're riding on board with Alex Chia in fourth position. Four of them already pulling out a gap to Nazir Asman in, uh, in, in, in sixth, sixth position. Yeah, in fact, fifth position right now, Nazir Asman is falling way behind because I don't know why Yannick is on in front in our screen as well, and indeed the timing screen. So something happened to Yevin's brother, but whatever it is, that's besides the point. We're looking at it here now in real time for both the VR set and the live, the live pictures. Alicia trying to challenge his teammate, sort of teammate, and also his cousin for fourth position. Now third position, not quite. As Yevin David makes a slight mistake there coming out of the Mercedes Benz Arena. And lost a bit of time to Anushka Mendes, or is it? No, it's Mendes. Was it? No, no, no. That's actually Yevon David because the timing screen is getting confused. In fact, Mendes takes the lead. Yeah, nicely done there. Let's go right on board with Mendes. He's got um, he's leading quite comfortably now. This is exactly what he needed. When you've got the pace advantage, you just really need to try and get a good clean start because the worst thing is to get involved, have a bad start, be down a fourth or fifth position, lose your rhythm. But um, he's done a perfect start, and uh, with that pace advantage, he's going to start pulling away. Really, really feel that Bernard Chan, I think, or, or, or Yevan David really need to start uh, taking the fight and, and thinking about um, trying to close down that gap to the leader, because if he's not, they're not careful, they're going to be gone. Yeah, tripping over each other might be the worst thing that could happen right now. In fact, they are in four. Line of stern, Whoa. all the way up to fifth as, oh, Bernard trying there. Well, we know that he is actually quite a brave late breaker, but that will be asking a bit too much of the car trying to overtake at turn two where normally you don't see that many drivers trying to overtake anyway because it's such a tight radius coming through turn two that opens up the turn three you won't have any time to go side by side anyway so Bernard then should have actually held it off to go here right now as he tries to look on the inside of Yevon David does he get moved on yes he does super. what a oh no way he hasn't Yevon wow. hangs around the outside and slides his way out super late in the brakes almost made it happen but it wasn't to be uh, and uh, Yevon David holds on for now Indeed, wow, that is quite a brave move there for both uh, Bernard Chan and Yevon David because you know what's going to happen in fact further behind us, I think that's not Angelo Gonzalez, no, that's that was Angelo Gonzalez, Alan Drake Cruz further up in front of there in fifth place, yeah. so he nearly he nearly went into the barriers as what happened to uh, Brandon Watanabe in the copper races now, so luckily he held it together, in fact, he, he has to do well to keep it out of the wall because these cars have damage and Formula 3 cars being wings and slicks, slight damage to aerodynamics is going to be detrimental to your performance. Yeah, so I mean, it's um, Gonzalez there, a little bit messy. Oh, look at him, he's trying to think, very adventurous, very brave. You can't accuse him of being a scared driver, but um, compromise on the exit. But he attacks straight back and uh, he's all over the, uh, the now he's right side by side with Asman. And uh, he, he'll have the inside for turn one, and uh, that's it, the position is his. Can actually fight back the black arts boss from e1 <laughs> he won't take that lying down he'll try to get back up as soon as possible as behind him is chris matthews the australian so 
points still on offer for everybody here up to 15th place we just held by currently Henry Co ahead of Rob, uh, Robert Robbins the American so we got plenty of drivers from all over the world here racing today but back up to the front Alex Yarden on board with him in, all, in VR and in live picture he's gonna go through on the inside of his Ooh. teammate and cousin no he no, doesn't no he backs out of it wow I guess obviously thinking about the family dynamics at lunch tomorrow <laughs> so <laughs> decided not to send it down the inside and uh Bernard survives for now. Something that probably Nabi Asma would take him off if he was to do something like that again yeah. against Naki. But yeah, that is actually quite sensible driving from the two drivers. In fact, especially for Alex, he's just thinking about right now scoring crucial points. In fact, looking at his championship from the first round it, last time out at the Red Bull Ring, he did score, yeah, he scored 15th and a 6th. So it's a, it's a bit of an indifferent start this season, so he'll be yeah. just looking to score a good amount of points here, especially at fourth place. Yeah. So here we are, Cruz right now um, in, um, what, what position is he? He had uh, position five, um, but got Gonzalez all over him. Gonzalez has been super aggressive. I, I'm not sure if he's going to have any tires at the end of the race, but uh, yeah, Alan Drake Cruz doing a really good job. A bit of a deja vu here for Francis Angel Angelo Gonzalez, because remember the last time out, oh, I was about to say, well, he, he might just want to tuck in behind the slipstream of his fellow countrymen again. And in fact, it's another kid again, because remember, Axel Nocon was the guy that held off Angelo Gonzalez while they were battling for second and third. Yeah. They let Bernard get away with that. Oh, that's a car into the barrier. That might have been Nazir Azman, isn't it? Because I can't see. Who's... Yeah, Zikri, Mohammed Zikri has gone all the way down. Oh. oh, shame. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's out. It's just a shame for him. But uh, let's go back to the fight between Cruz right now, who's inset right now, who's fighting with um, Gon uh, Gonzalez ever so closely. In fact, Gonzalez has the run on him because he had the momentum that took him ahead of him for when he exited turn four. Yeah. Now Cruz has to think about defending onto the inside here. He has because the inside. Oh, Ooh, has he outbraked himself? Yeah. That's a lock up. Yes, he does. Oh man, and oh, who's that spinning? That's Alex Chia, isn't it? Yeah, it's Alex Chia. He's actually spun into the infield, coming out of the hairpin. To the, on the way to the Mercedes Benz Arena, so now it's going to be a straight fight for fourth place between these guys. Wow, it's going to be a good battle right now. The front three are disappearing. Um, but oof, as they come around this corner here, and Drake manages to get down and through Alex Chia. So great move by the young uh, Filipino driver. <laughs> wow, we and that's a move against a very seasoned driver, shall we say, because uh, VR goggles, a really good sim racing set. You know, this guy's been around in the sim biz for quite a few years, so he'll <laughs> probably not want to take that line down, try to get back up again. But Speaking of getting back on the inside, Angelo Gonzalez takes the inside against Alex Chia and takes sixth place away from him. Alex Chia then with that slight mistake. Probably he just got a bit too ha happy, trigger happy with the throttle coming out of the hairpin and spun it around. Now he's under attack by another Malaysian, Nazi Hasman. As the two Filipinos up in front, gonna go side by side again. Does Angelo Gonzalez get the move done this time? Yes, wow. he does. And Alex Chia tries to go through in the inside as well, coming up through the north curve. Not quite this time. Yeah, Gonzalez finally through. He has had the pace, he's had some good pace right now, and now he's up to position four. So, um, yeah, that's a good move by him. But I, I just wonder how much that early spin and the hard driving will have taken out of the tire life. I mean, whether he'll have, you know, seven and a half minutes still to go. Where they, ooh, Whoa! So, who's that? Is that Nazi Asman? That's Asman. That's Nazi Asman for real this time. Oh, so, the dear. Team Rising Line boys are not having an absolutely great day here today. Oh, dear, what a shame. And uh, I don't think it's necessary to reverse actually because yeah. you just gotta have to wait for the drivers to come through. In yeah. fact, if you reverse, you're gonna even stall more time. And well, right now, he's just on the cusp of the points. Yeah, well, Asman's always been a very polite driver. He just didn't want to go straight on the track and accidentally take someone out. So, um, I, uh, very considerate of him. Uh, maybe too considerate. But anyway, back at the front, <laughs> we've got this exciting battle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. Indeed, and the fact that Gonzalez has pulled a bit of a gap and uh, Drake looking a little bit gingerly there. And I thought yeah. for a second he might have had damage. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? He didn't look like he was going a bit slow. Let's see if he comes up. Yeah, there he is in the background in the yellow car. Yeah, he's completely lost touch. Um, you're right. I wonder if he's got some damage because he's going very carefully. Yeah, you're right. I think he's got a puncture. It's a puncture. It's a puncture. I can confirm it. I'm looking at the timing screen. It is a puncture for Alan Drake Cruz. So that's a disaster for him. And in fact, the time... Oh, that's a big hit there for La Caramba. La Camera, sorry. Into the back of Chris Matthews. Matthews will probably actually get in a wake-up call early in the morning here in Australia. In Australia. But Alan Drake Cruz doesn't realise it. He's got a puncture, and in fact, there goes the tyre. The right rear, the right rear tyre. In fact, everyone's coming to the pits. That's a surprise. Wow. So everyone's worried with tyre wear, so they're doing a pit stop. That's why some of them are going so hard. Wow, we. 
And in fact, this is going to play up an actually interesting strategy play here because we got some drivers coming to the pits and we got still drivers out on track. Those drivers out on track, we feel, might just want to back it off a bit and yeah. just try to conserve the tyres all the way to the end. Yeah, like that's, this guy. Yeah, let's, well, Mendes is at the front. Um, he has had it really easy at the start front, so I don't think he'll need a pit because he'll just have to drive really nice and carefully and it won't be an issue. Yevon David, though, and Bernard have been scrapping very hard this whole race. So you wonder, do they have the tyre life to go the whole race without a pit stop? You know, we are at times three, so we, the drivers are obviously worried about tyre life in this short 15-minute race. And uh, let's we forget that the tyres that we're running, I think, are Yokohama tyres or Hancock tyres, which is actually the exact same tyres that the real-life European F3 series ran at one point. These were not meant to run more than 50 minutes anyway, so when you expedite what is a 50 minute race, you're running basically 45 minutes worth of running in just 15, so you're really on the cusp of tire wear, tire life here when you run so hard. So right now the guys at the front, they just want to finish this race because points on offer is just too good of a temptation to push that hard. Or oh, unless, of course, you just want to go for it like yeah. uh, we saw earlier in the race with Angelo Gonzalez, yeah. who we might feel for his tyre as well. Well, Mendes, top three, do not come in for a pit stop, so they're nice and safe. Gonzalez in P4, he also doesn't come into a pit stop, so seems very secure there. Alex Chow as well. So the top five are nicely through. Mutic is the next car on board, uh, on sixth, um, with Chris Matthews right behind him. So it seems like there's a whole bunch of them who have been able to make the tyres last um, and can go the whole way. But equally, there's another whole bunch of them, good five, six drivers who weren't able to make the tyres last and they've had to come in for a pit stop. And I can't see, uh, according to the indicator on the screen, because uh, the light timing screen is show, only showing an exclamation mark. So uh, unless we put a mandatory pit stop, we can see if the drivers have made pit stops enough. But yeah, that tyre wear issue right now might be creeping into some of their drivers' minds. Unless, of course, you're up in front and you have a clear gap, you wouldn't want to actually squander this good point scoring position at the moment, especially for Mendes, coming into this race, storming to not only a poor position, but presumably now a fastest lap and a race win. Yeah, Mendes really, really good job here. Um, actually, we should go try and have a look at um, Alex Chow back in um, fifth position right now, see if we can get the onboards of him, because if you look on the onboards, oh, you can't quite see it, but I can see it because I have, can see it in Zoom. His front left tyre is getting very, very worn out. Three and a half minutes to go, he can't pit now, because if he pits now, he's, he's going to lose too much time. But, um, you know, he's going to have to baby those tyres now. Because when the tyres get this worn, if you lock up the tyres even a little bit, you will puncture. And indeed, in fact, a uh, technique called cadence braking might be good here, because that's the kind of braking that you do in the wet, don't you think, Alex? Because you yeah. just break, break initially and then you just break softly coming to the corner. Yeah, and so here are some of the other drivers who have come in for a pit stop. There's Alan Drake Cruz, a little bit further up. We haven't heard from him actually for a while, but Axel Norcom has had a very quiet race as well. I think he must have been one of the drivers that pitted as well. Um, so these guys will be battling for fastest lap, I would imagine. Uh, but at the moment, they're out, well, they're just inside the points. Someone yep. else has gone off. Right, who's, who's that? that was Chris Matthews. Oh, it's Chris Matthews yeah, who was involved in that big collision with La yeah. Cambra. In fact, I think he's also gotten a puncture as well because look at it, how gingerly the car's coming through. Yeah. So I, I think for, you know, when tire wear is this high, like times three for the former three cars and you're struggling to make it last, you have to commit. If you're going to do a pit stop, you need to commit straight away from the beginning and, and, and so, so you can just push really hard. Um, but if you're trying to make the tires last the whole race and then you'd like Matthews, you, you get a pit uh, puncture very late on, that's pretty much your race done. Yep, and uh, right now 13th place, in fact 40 is going to drop all the way back to the back uh, to the end of the top 15 if this keeps up. It's going to be a while to dip it. In fact, we're coming up back to the battle for second between Bernard Chan and uh, Yevon David. Bernard has the inside line coming out of the Mercedes-Benz Arena and he takes second place away from him. That's a brilliant piece of driving from both drivers that they didn't hit each other while trying to make an overtake maneuver, but Yevon's not going to give up. So, these are on really worn tyres. we got a couple more laps to go. Um, wow, so they, they, I mean, they're racers, aren't they? They want to take that second position. They want to finish in front of the other. But if they just have oh, that, those, see those small little contacts like that, that's what's going to give you a bunch of if you're not careful. We saw that especially in E1, especially when a front wing panel on the side hits the back of a tyre, it's enough to cause a puncture. That's what happened to Kaylin Chin, where he was trying to overtake Nabil, uh, Nabil Aslan. And uh, for Formula 3 cars, it's kind of a rarity because you don't have tyres that are, you know, wearing out as fast as Formula 1 tyres, so we won't see that, but you never know. A slight touch like that might cause a puncture. Yeah, well, two more laps to go. 
Oh, and then we come to the braking zones. I think quite a few of these drivers right now will be like right in the red with the tire wear. Um, and, and like I said earlier, if you're in the red uh, and you lock up a wheel, you'll puncher. Um, you know, damage is full for the bronze class. It's not like copper where it's limited. Uh, we have full damage here. So um, yeah, the drivers are going to really have to watch out. Mendes is also going quite a bit slower as well. His last lap was quite a bit slow. And look how much slower they are. They're doing the 43s, 44s right now. And you've got Axel Nockholm in the 39s at the moment, closing fast on these drivers. You can tell that he is in the news because he is one of the drivers that pitted. So uh, he's about five seconds faster than the rest of them. So if he could make up time ahead of the, car, the guys ahead, he could actually be in the running to get some good points. In fact, eighth place Jonathan Kudumili might be looking over his back because here we go yeah. right now. We're watching Axel Nockholm who has that picture with Jean Todt. He is looking good here to gain good ground on the guys in front. Yeah. MJ Mouton, Henry goes in for ahead of him, so he's got two Team Uncle cars to overtake. Yeah, I mean, he's five seconds a lap quicker than the other cars in front, but it's uh, it's only one and a half laps to go. It's going to be too, 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 too close, I feel. Well, you never know. In fact, oh, actually, yeah, we're coming out to the end of the race now. So, Mendes, Anushka Ooh. Mendes here, coming up. By the time he comes out to the final corner, that is the last lap, and what a brilliant win. Ball position, fastest in practice, and now has led every single lap in this race that we has seen pit stops. He doesn't need one. He comes across the line now and takes the win here for the bronze class race one of round two of the championship. And second place, Yevin David. Somehow out of our cameras, Yevin actually nicked back second place from Bernard Chan. But Bernard wow. won't, be, won't be complaining too much. He will still get good points in the championship and extends his lead at the top. Wow, so yes, he'll be still happy with the championship league. He just made it to the end of the race. Um, so drivers obviously struggling with tire wear just to get there. Alex Chia um, just crossed the line. Mutic will take sixth position. So good result by the Filipino driver. Uh, Gonzalez in eighth in, in sixth position. Is he oh. going to hold off to the line? Was Axel Nockham. Whoa, Whoa, that was close. Wow, wait. And the thing, these two were having a ding-dong battle last time out in the Red Bull Ring when they were trying to swap each other's positions. Yeah. Nockham came out top that time. This time it's Angelo Gonzalez, but it's only for just consolation point shall we say because six plays would definitely not be what these drivers would have wanted coming into this yeah. round but you know what that tells me um ammo because knock was not in the top five but he managed to almost get in the top five again with that pit stop he was quite far out so it makes me wonder whether a pit stop might be the fastest way to take this 15 minute race you know yeah. you know because he was doing four or five seconds a lap quicker if he's doing four or five seconds a lap quicker over a good six seven laps that's a pit stop you know, Indeed. so yeah. I, I think it might be worth a risk. Unless you can have a buffer, like maybe around 30 seconds at least, you can actually need it. But you can't pull a 30 second gap in a 50 minute race. No. But yeah, some of these drivers that did go for the pit stop, they gambled on it because they were further behind. And the ones that stayed on track are the ones that got easily swallowed up by them. So yeah, it might be the way to go. It's like an alternate strategy in Formula 2 in Bahrain, for example, because the, some of the sprint races we had over the quite few, over a few years had been won because of pit stops. But that will be something to be answered in race two. As we look at the provisional results for race one here, it's Anushka Mendes ahead of Yevin David, Bernard Chan third, and Alex Chia fourth. So Sri Lanka one, two, Malaysia three, four, with the rest of it being Filipino with Mutoj, Gonzalez, Nocom, Drake Cruz up into eighth place. As all the way up to eighth place with uh, Drake Cruz. And ninth, Henry Cove, 10 is Rizky Ramadan from Indonesia. Okay, well, that was an exciting race. Um... I, I know we turned up tire wear to times three for the Formula 3 cars, but um, I, I expected them to actually still make the tires last, um, but not everyone can do that. So I wonder how many people will be thinking about that strategy now, about taking the pit stop, um, because you lose a lot of time when you're trying to look after the tires, don't you, Amo? Yeah, you, indeed. In fact, the five-second interval, sorry, five-second gap mm -hmm. that you lose between staying on track and pitting is just too much, especially if you're, the gap can actually be cut like that every lap. So... Uh, for Mendes, who had the luxury of a race lead that far, he could not he for, he for not to do a pit stop. But for guys that are further behind, it might be worth taking the gamble. So we might see this again in the second race. Okay, so we're here for race two, reverse grid race. Takumi Lee's actually on pole. We got a swing arm camera on the track there, so that's a very nice view to watch. As the red lights go out now, and Jonathan Takumi Lee will lead the field coming up to turn one. Sherman saying. The Malaysian is in second, but he gets an absolutely terrible start. It's going to be Jonathan Kamili who gets the whole shot coming to the Denot curve. Second is Nizar Nizki Ramadan. Third is his teammate, Hen his teammate to Jonathan Kamili, Henry Cohen. Fourth, with Angelo Gonzalez making all the way up to third now after the first turn as we now stream through to turn two. Let's ride on board with um, Sherman Singh right now. He's um, right in the mix of it. 
uh, right now currently uh, Aldis, sorry, we're with Cruz at the moment in position four um, and he's defending from Sherman Singh and uh, got Gonzalez right ahead of him right long and, uh, straight yeah with his Alan Drake and in fact they're, they're, he's running the same car as uh, as an Ocon so we might confuse uh, one or two of them if they were to be in close proximity speaking of close proximity this is going to be very close coming into the hairpin oh slight RG bargy between some drivers but for the most part it is absolutely clean everyone has actually gotten through the first few corners okay Let's see, oh, Nushka Mendes though, he's not had a good day. He's down in P17, so obviously got involved in some of the RG Bargy in the first couple of corners. Um, but championship leader Bernard Wong's also not been that great. He's only a little few places up in position 12. Um, but obviously that this is a better position for him. Maybe he can get into the points, maybe into the top five. Oh, he's gonna try and do a double overtake into the right-hander. Yes, it is, it's a double overtake. Nicely done by Chan. Uh, can he hold on to it to the to this left-hander here? No, uh, Anta Buyan says no. I, I want it back, and uh, Yevon David falls him through. <laughs> and that's a very, very typical Formula Three start move because, despite not having DRS, they can actually fall close to each other. Whoa, but, but uh, that's not Bernard. Sorry, that's actually uh, Yevon David. Yeah, Yevon David. They're nearly hitting the back of Anta Buyan as out of our sight. Francis Angel Gonzalez has taken the lead away from Jonathan Kumi Lee. Wow. So that's that's we're riding on board with Gonzalez right now. Whoa, he hasn't just taken the lead, he's taken the lead by a mile, two and a half seconds up the road. That's going to look very good for him because um, he can now look after his tyres and try and manage them. Indeed, and in fact that we saw just now, like the same way, uh, case with Anushka Mendes, he just, after he took the lead away from the rest of the field, he just needed to conserve it. Yes, initially he pushed it hard a bit so that he could have a safe buffer, but from then on he just looked absolutely unchallenged. And now, uh, you, as you say, Alex, Angelo Gonzalez will try to do the exact same thing. He's got a good buffer of three seconds ahead of Alex Chow, who is actually overtaking to Kumi Lee. As Drake Cruz on the with the dive bomb of dreams, doing an absolute Hail Mary. And he look at that, he is absolutely chuffed with that one. He has actually taken two positions, killing two birds with one stone. Now he's up to third, but can he hold on to that? Because the other two drivers might not be too pleased about that. <laughs> the overtake of dreams, I love that. I tell you what, he'll be thinking about that when he's sleeping tonight. He'll be dreaming about that move for days. That was such a sweet move by the young man. Wow, yeah, look at that, he's still, well, he was smiling for a second, now he's back to focus mode because he knows that the race is still not over, it's only 12 minutes, uh, to us 12 minutes left, the race is only 3 minutes young, and he could try, anything could happen, he could try to, well, do, not do it like that actually, because he was trying to push the car, but he couldn't shoot, he shouldn't put it, push it too much, because the tyres might actually be his kryptonite. Yeah, and you can just see the red and white car of Alex Kucher, who's just up the road from him in P2. Cruz is in P3. John van Takumi Lee now in P4, he, uh, the early leader. But look who's behind him. He's got Antar. Antar from Bangladesh in P5. And they want him to burn a Chan. He's still down in P10. But Antar, he was outside the top 10 on the lap one. But he's done a great job to get up to P5. Yep, in fact, he's right behind the initial race leader, John van Lee. He was on pole for, the, for this race. And the Petronas looking colored cars, albeit because it's actually <laughs> the turquoise colors, is actually named after the capital of Kazakhstan, Astana. He's now right behind him. They're gonna go side by side. Takumi Lee gets a really poor run out of turn four. They touch. The side walls of both tires touch there, and he doesn't get a slipstream because Anta has actually ducked out of it. So he's gonna have to do yet another Hail Mary the way that uh, Drake Cruz did. Does he? Is he brave enough? Ooh. Yes, he is. Yes, In fact, he does. It's actually no histrionics, it's just a simple overtaking maneuver. Takumi Lee then didn't defend too much. Yeah, textbook really. Good move by Anta. Um, I think he was. Ah, well, very, very good move actually. He thought that he was not going to get it done because he was not in the slipstream, but the momentum that he carried coming into the hairpin was just enough through the parabolica, and Takumi Lee just didn't have an answer for that because he could try to be a little bit sketchy by trying to block it off, but that would probably just cause an accident. And Takumi Lee probably thinking further ahead and try to save tyres. And meanwhile, we're looking at Axel Nokom, who's making his way through the field. He's up to seven right now, ahead of, well, it's a, it's a pack of cars all the way to Sherman Singh in 14. In fact, Singh just got ahead of Yann, uh, Yannick David as Marcus Lacambra, who was in the pit lane just now for a drive through in the first race, goes up to fifth, overtaking Jonathan Takumi Lee. So Takumi Lee then dropping further behind, presumably because he's trying to save his tyres, while these guys up in front are just absolutely pushing it. Yeah, that's right. So Lacambra, there, new driver with us from the Philippines as well. Um, I think from Seven Star Garage, doing a good job. Oh, there he is in the inset. Um, looking super focused. Oh, another young... Oh! oh! Into the barrier. In fact, look at that. Front wing's gone. His the entire oh. nose goes gone. 
That's the race done for him. Yeah, and the Cumbra actually go karts in real life as well. So just a little bit too aggressive there. Unfortunately, this is going to ruin his race, and he's going to find it really hard to um, recover from that. He's going to have to pit for a new nose for sure. So look at that. Yeah. Oh dear. Look at that. <laughs> That car is going to feel like a Formula Ford car now because no front wing. Well, if he gets rid of the reserve, he's going to look at it like a total Formula Ford car. But yeah, not whatever wanted. That curve on the outside can catch out anybody and has caught out that rookie. As uh, no such troubles for his fellow countryman Francis, An Francis Angelo Gonzalez. 4.3 seconds ahead of Alex Chia now. And looking li like <laughs> he's looking impervious here for the win. They're going to have to think about tire, price, tire conservation now in the final nine minutes that remain. Yeah, that's the advantage of getting out in front because you can then control your pace and look after the tires and make sure you can get through the 15 minutes without a pit stop. I think the guys in the middle, they're going to be a bit more desperate. They might race a bit harder, but they're going to fancy the chances of maybe trying to do a pit and trying to do what Axel Nocom did in the race before. But um, yeah, it's going to be super tough for us. Oh, behind Takumi Lee though, finally, um, Bernard Chan has managed to bake himself up in the top six. Um, these are useful points for the championship leader. Indeed, and the fact that, speaking of useful points, because his other championship rivals, one of them not be here, of course, because Chester Lam and Yevin David, he's actually in 10th place right now. He's not going to be challenged at all, because by the end of this round, he's still going to be championship leader, and he's going to get a good buffer of points ahead of both of them. So he'll be thinking about not doing a pit stop here right now as well, just to conserve it, because these are good haul of points in the grand scheme of things. He'll still be leader, and he'll be lapping all the way to the bank because of that. Yeah, we're watching Risky Ramadan. Yeah, I thought so. Uh, Coming to the last couple of laps, yeah, corners yeah, on that exactly. last lap, he looked very tentative and I think he's also just about getting a puncture. He should have gone in for a pit stop, I feel, um, but that uh, it's going to be tough for him now. In fact, you're right, because looking at the timing screen, he has sustained a puncture and it's a slow puncture too. Looks like the right rear tire has sustained a bit because you can see that the car slumped, slumped somewhat to the rear right, so that's a rear right puncture for him. It's going to be hell for him because that slow puncture is going to turn into a big one if he actually doesn't get that car just go. nursed all the way. So, uh, yeah, let's see what happened to uh, guys who finished one and two in the earlier race. Jevon David, oh, he's had a problem. He's coming for a, for a quick uh, tire change as well. Um, finished P2, not such a good result for him, unfortunately. But um, his countryman, um, Mendes, has completely disappeared. So he's not having a good race. Back up front, though. Look at Takumi Lee. In fact, uh, Mendes is up to seven, so... A good recovery oh. drive. He dropped back Too into the easy. tail end of the top 15 for a second. Now he's back up to the points. Okay. And he's right behind another fellow driver for uh, the Rising Line cars. Teammate to Nazir Azman and uh, Mohamed Zikri holding on, the, holding on to sixth place. So that will be for the first points for him of the season because he didn't join round one. So this will be a good point to start, to, good points to start the season with. Apologies there. Yes, of course. A great recovery drive because he was right down in 18th position on lap one. Um, now up to seven. Hopefully he's got the tires to take him to the end of the race. Um, but yes, he's all over the back of Edward Wong. You just got a feeling it's just a matter of time before he um, finds his way through. Yep, and uh, he has the pace advantage and indeed the advantage of presumably tires because he has. He doesn't look really phased at all because the cards. Oh, somebody in the barriers in the inside of the wall there. That looks like Nazir Asman, I think. Uh, looking at where who was stationary on the track, no, it's not. That might have been. That was. That looked like his car for a second. Probably was just a momentary bit of lag that looked like as if his car stopped there. But anyway, we're looking up now back to uh, Nishka Mendes. And in fact, Nazi Alman fell behind to eighth, I think, because eighth place is just now worse than Nishka Mendes. But whatever it is, the drivers who are up in front here right now will be looking to conserve their tyres because they're well clear of the guys behind. Don't go on the speed too much. Grass. Yeah, with the hairpin. Mendes then in his sights. Edward Wong, Takumi Lee further up in front. Takumi Lee then, initial leader as a drive for panic for Nizariski Ramadan for speeding the pit lane. That's presumably because he was trying to pit for new tyres. Unfortunately, incurred the wrath of the in game penalty stewards for running the pit lane line. So that's unfortunate for him. And he'll be scoring no points for this run. We're looking at the battle for pit place. Takumi Lee then, who led the race initially before being overtaken by Francis Angelo Gonzalez. And Gonzalez has not looked back. Eight seconds up to the good up in front with Takumi Lee then falling further further behind. 16 seconds in fact to uh, Angelo Gonzalez. We're looking at Angelo Gonzalez there and Alex Chia first and second on the road. Eight seconds is the differen differential between the two drivers. And Anta Buyan, out of all of that, is in third place. What a great way to return to the championship. And he's closing in on Alex Chia. He's only two, a couple seconds behind good Alex Chia, so he's doing a good job. Let's ride on board with Anta right now. Oh, he's coming for a pit stop. Oh, oh 
so that's that amazing pace is because he was using up his tires. He's going to change tires now. Oh, it's too late to change tires. That I, might be a late call, isn't it? Yeah, you really need to pit in the five, fifth, or sixth minute um, with um, a lot of, like um, eight, nine minutes to go, not four minutes to go. He's, it's going to be too hard for him to get back up to the front. I feel. Maybe a bridge too far, but maybe just the type of type of stop that he needed to actually make up for the deficit where he just lost on track. Due to, uh, sorry, lost it in the pits. The five second advantage that we saw just now, especially with the likes of Axel Nocon when he pitted, it, that might be good for him to actually score points. In fact, he's still not that far off. He's only five seconds behind the no, the kid that we call Nocon. He is only, what, about 16, 16 seconds behind Anushka Mendes. So the time that he lost in the pits wasn't that much actually. So he could still be back in the points point, point playing position and the podium position if he could keep his pace up in the final four minutes that it remains. Yeah, well, this is right on board. It's, it's just not enough time, I feel. I feel he should have just driven harder and pitted two laps earlier. It's leaving too much for him to do. Maybe he can get into the top 10, we'll see. Um, good fight there though between the two youngsters again, um, Cruz and Nocom. I think these guys are going to have a long career fighting each other, actually. Indeed, and the fact that that's actually not no come, that's actually Henry Cole in front of him because, oh. yeah, <laughs> I didn't mention earlier because they're driving the same colored car, so that might be confusing. In fact, both uh, Filipino kids are driving the Puma color, Puma cars, so a bit of a confusion there. That might be because they're driving the same team, which is Seven Star Garage, and I'm taking. But either way, right now Drake Cruz, who did that absolutely breathtaking maneuver in the first few laps to take third place. Now I think has made a pit stop, so that's why he's dropped back to 10. He's in a recovery job as LJ Mutoch in the Racing Stats Foundation car, his fellow countryman, runs wide coming out of the slope curve onto the start finish line. Does he move move stake? No, he can't. In fact, I think he's also having a slow punch. But look at that. Yeah. Mutoch lost a huge amount of time. Yeah, so the local battle there, seven star garage in the yellow cars and in the uh, white, blue and red cars, Sim Racing Filipinas. And yes, Mutoch is really struggling, isn't he? He's going to go, uh, yeah. So a few drivers coming afoul of that. Mutoch there slowing down really now. But uh, beneficiary, beneficiary of that, of course, is Anta, who's now up to P11. Indeed, and uh, it'll be an even bigger benefit for him if he could try to make up uh, that, as many positions as possible in the final two minutes that remains because he was running in the podium positions and unfortunately has to come in for a pit stop. Yes. Oh, that's an absolute dive bomb there on Alan Drake Cruz. No, sorry, that, that's Axel Noko. That's uh, Henry, Henry Ko. My, my apologies because, <laughs> again, we got confused by the same cars there. But yeah, no, it is Axel Noko. Ante Buyan has actually overtaken the inside Noko and has taken 10th place back in the points. But that will be too far for him to get back up to where Bernard Chan is, who is about... 17 seconds up the road from him where he is right now in fact 18 seconds so it might not be enough for him to make up 18 seconds with one half minutes left that remain but still but still a really good drive really enjoyed the drive by Antada you're doing a really really good job indeed and it's great to see him back in the championship because he is one of those drivers that are excited that are excited was much like his good friend Mitchell Chia in touring cars they're, these guys just really push it and they know when something's got to be offered today they'll take it with both hands as now we're watching the inter-team battle and inter-family battle between the cousins Alex Chia and Bernard Chan Bernard being the guy behind and Alex goes <laughs> Alex actually runs a bit wide there and Bernard takes second place so that Ooh, might have been team play don't you think Alex? yeah I think so team orders there I, I wonder if it was team orders or just Alex Chia being super nice to his cousin but uh, yeah really made it easy for Bernard to slip down the inside these guys aren't teammates in the endurance edition they race together I think they won round one of the endurance edition so um, actually only not been sim driving that long either both of them but um, yeah I guess uh, families that play together stay together and um, they're doing a great job the two of them absolutely and uh, I think for the greater good for both of them they just wanted to not cause too much histrionics because right now they're in a very promising position both of them granted despite the points paying position being less in race two it's still points that count towards the end of the championship and I think Alex might have thought that with them being this close and Bernard is just gonna get good points he's just gonna have to give it away and second place after being right up in the top 10 in the first in fact after finishing third in the first race Bernard will be laughing all the way to the bank with the amount of points that he's got in this round as meanwhile now out of our sights we're gonna go back to the race leader Francis Angelo Gonzalez 
is going to score his first win of the season in the bronze class after coming so close last time out at the Red Bull Ring with a second place and uh, with retirement. But this time, he is smiling all the way. The Smiling Assassin is back and he is absolutely <laughs> over the moon. He is absolutely, look at that. He's doing like a Michael Schumacher impression back in 2000 when he won the World Championship. Look at how happy he is. That is pure joy on his face. Wow, wow, wow. Francis Angelo Gonzalez, we have to talk to you. Um, <laughs> oh, well, he's kind of in fact, he is actually relieved as well because he actually got a puncture. He got a wow. puncture towards the end of the race. So he was Francis. looking forward to it. Yeah, F Francis, can you hear us? Yes, yes, I can hear you guys. What a great job. Whoa, talk us through that race. Last. Oh, my God. Last, uh, last one minute and 20 seconds, I. My tire, my left front tire blew up, and I was like, "Oh no, I think I'm gonna lose the race." Then I, then I remembered Hamilton's uh, 2020 performance at Silverstone. I was like, "Right, I think I can do this." Yeah, just bring it home slowly. Yeah, well, yes. fantastic. Slow and steady. Oh my God! <laughs> wow. Redemption day from what from what happened last week. Well, I mean, <laughs> yes. Great win for you. Great win for Sim Racing uh, Filipinas so. as well. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Overjoyed! That's how much it matters to these guys. Fantastic! Congratulations, Francis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God! <laughs> well, just like live sport and indeed virtual sports, the emotions really come into play, and that's the human drama involved in these. That is just a exemplary of it. Because look at that! How he is so happy with that victory. You, you know, because last time he battled so hard with no com for second place, and he ended up third before that suspension failure in race two robbed them of any points so he's he's just happy to get back onto winning ways and indeed back into the championship hunt as we look at the provisional results angelo gonzalez wins second bernard chan third is alex chia fourth edward wong who actually nicked it away from it uh nishka mendez at the end i think fifth is sorry fifth mendez sixth is committee seven buyan eighth is nazi Ahman, recovering well after that first one first race spin ninth is drake Cruz and cruise and tenth is no com so that's the top 10 point scoring positions with buyan scoring the fastest lap Fantastic. I just love that emotion. It sends shivers down my spine. I mean, really fantastic. Um, I mean, it wasn't the most exciting race we saw, but you could see how much tension there was, you know, because tire wear was a lot higher for bronze today. Um, and you could see they were all struggling with that. And even Gonzalez, who took the lead quite early on, and he could kind of baby the tires a bit, still had a puncher with a lap to go. But luckily, he had the gap to win. Indeed. And in fact, that's why it's the drivers behind, in this case, Bernard was actually closing up to him dramatically. Uh, yeah, luckily he actually held on to that, and uh, the the win the win is probably worth it for him even more so in the context of the championship because further along the line, if anything would happen to the other drivers like Bernard or like several championship contenders, yeah. that win might be crucial. Exactly right. Okay, so we've had the bronze class. Thank you so much, Ammo. Um, we're gonna get Des back in for silver, and then you come back with us for gold. Um, exciting racing, a lot more exciting racing still to go. We'll be right back after these few words. Things to be aware of organizing e-racing championship without race room. First, no automated leaderboard would always be labor intensive. Elimination round would be the only way to fill for the winners, having the participants adhering to the schedule would be a huge test. We need to know the task will get bigger when participants increases. Time consuming. Organizing e-racing championship without race room. It's all need run manually to take and down the participants and eliminate them from first round group to final round group. Because it is manual human labor, they're bound to be human error. Manual human labor would have a price tag for the man hours involved. New participants would never have chance. The e-racing clubs in the world will send their best racers to participate the race. But that means your championship exposure is just limited to the e-racing clubs. Why choose race room? Our 3E official championship have fully automated leaderboard. Participants can log in anytime to leave the fastest lap time within the qualifying period. Each of the racers already have their ranks with race room. Next, save time. You can have unlimited amounts of participants in a super short time to qualifying them to final race. Race Room can cover unlimited amount of participants. We have a full automated eSports ecosystem from qualifying leaderboard to broadcast AI. 
Besides, Race Room's free contents lets everyone can participate to the race.